So looks like we could start. Um, so I'll, I'll open up the meeting. Um, and I have one adjustment to the agenda. Does anybody else have any adjustments to the agenda? I don't. No? Okay. So um, the one adjustment I have is that um, John Reed has joined us and um, he is willing to be appointed as um, an auditor until next town meeting day, um, kind Perfect. of like we did for, for the library trustees. Um, and then the person, we do have a person pretty much ready to be the representative to the Central Vermont Solid Waste Management District Board, but they hadn't been able to talk to anybody to get a sense of what that commitment means. So um, I just asked them, I told them we could do that again at our next meeting. I, I'd like to have them, you know, kind of check in with somebody because I, I don't know what, what's entailed with that. So we're going to take that item off. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, Hopefully they'll they'll would have connected with someone by our next meeting. Um, so so that that's the only adjustment that I have. Kind of trading who we appoint tonight. Um, any public comment at all? I don't see any members of the public? So I guess we're good. Um, so do I hear a motion to approve the bills to the town? So move. A second. Okay. And um, any discussion at all? No? Okay. So um, all those in favor of approving the bills to the town, please say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Bill, bills are approved. Um, <clears throat> and then um, the, the next thing on the item is to approve the minutes from the April 12th, uh, 2021 select board meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve those? Or? Motion to approve. Okay. From Chris, I'll second. All right. Any discussion at all about the minutes? Look okay. All right. So, um, all those in favor of approving the minutes to the April twelfth uh, select board meeting, um, say aye. 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 And then I, I just realized as I was getting ready tonight that I still need to create minutes for that health. Um, Hearing that we the had board meeting, yeah, health board meeting. I totally forgot about that. So um, I'll have those done, um, and we'll approve them at our next next meeting, I guess. Now, do we want to consider moving John up unless he wants to sit through this whole meeting? I mentioned to him that um, yeah, we could we could do it in like two minutes, really. Yeah, um, I'm just saying, I just he doesn't want to sit through all this exciting stuff we have to go yeah, through. Yeah. Well, if he's going to be an auditor, he better get excited. This about is true. It. This is true. <laughs> Maybe we should make him suffer. <laughs> he, he said he was going to kind of put around and do things and sort okay. of wait. So. Right. But John, if you're within earshot, if you would like to be appointed right now and then go about other things, we could do that. Sure. Can you hear okay. me? Can hear you. Yeah. Do you have any yep. questions for actually, you know, the person that you might want to we might want to have involved is Brandy, but do you have any questions for us or does the select board have any questions for John? I, I can give you a 60 second. I, you know, I've read everything that the Vermont League of Cities and Towns has about being a town auditor. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to you, Michael, I've talked with mm -hmm. uh, Brandy and Robin and Diana. So I have a- Oh, good. So you've talked, uh, okay. You've done some, some research. I have a good okay. sense, I think of, Whoops. He froze. Yeah. Maybe we should hurry and appoint him before he can get out of it. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen anymore or not. But yeah. Um, so if that were to be a complication, you know, I'd certainly, if someone better came along, I'd be happy to step aside. Um, my background is uh, running you know, a fairly large business. I don't have a finance background, but I, I know how to do appropriate checks and balances for both a large organization and a small organization. Um, and uh, I know how to read a P&L and, and work through a budget. And um, so I'm happy to give it a go. I have, um, okay. well, whenever I am in Woodbury, which, you know, is at least gonna be till October. Um, I, I have time to 
set up a weekly or monthly get together to go over the books, you know, what are check processes and then that type of thing. Um, and I think I read in the minutes that Chris had suggested that a, that a um, audit of the books be done. And, you know, obviously that's a good idea. I, I, in no position, I'm not in a position to say how that fits with the other priorities that the town uh, has since it's a costly endeavor. Um, so that's about it. So be happy. And I've lived in Woodbury all this time uh, for 25 years. I li also lived in Woodbury as a young adult. And I'm uh, retired. I used to work for Associated Press. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's it. If you have any questions, happy to answer them. Any questions, Paul or Chris? I don't. Oh, I don't. You're a willing well, live body. That's Donna. That's, I'll just say I really appreciate I really appreciate you uh, being willing to 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 step into this position. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me as well, because it's hard to fill these positions. Yeah. Well, the, the same to all of you. And um, um, I, I think I, I I don't want to speak for Paul and, and and Michael, but if we can support, you know, we we would support you in any possible way. Of course, as as, as an additional. <laughs> I mentioned this. So I mentioned this to Michael that uh, one auditor can't take any official action, just Correct. like a select board. There has to be a minimum of two, but that doesn't mean that I can't do the uh, work that's involved and report back to the select board or however I see fit. And perhaps if um, if uh, if another possible candidate down the road can see that the mechanism is in place so that it's not onerous. Um, to do that might encourage you know someone else to step in and then there'd be at least two mm -hmm. did you have anything you wanted to say brandy i just wanted to say it's nice to put a face with a name john and i appreciate you coming and stepping forward to do this thank you well i look forward to putting faces together a lot as everybody gets right vaccinated it'd be nice to life, be face to life. face again Life yeah. gets back to uh, normal. So, yeah. um, well, great. Well, I'll uh, I'll await the I'll I'll await the results of the uh, meeting, okay. and um, okay. if I'm appointed, I'll Brandy, I'll be getting together with you soon. Well, you I think we right can here. do that in a matter of thirty seconds. Um, yeah. I'll make a motion that we appoint John Reed as an auditor. Chris Cody is will second. Okay. I'll, any dis any further discussion? Hearing none, um, do I, I, all those in favor of appointing John Reed to be fill in as auditor until next town meeting day when um, if he's still willing, he might get elected too. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, it's official. Congratulations. <clears throat> Hang on, this may be somebody wanting to get into the meeting. I'll see y'all later. Don't forget All right, have a good evening. Bye, John. Bye. <clears throat>so that was patty she'll be joining us shortly for the mowing bid stuff okay um, so um robin we're ready for our town clerk's report well since we had our last meeting i'm still working on the dog licenses i've got it down to where only 69 unlicensed dogs for 2021 mm -hmm. that i had records for from last year Right. Yeah. And I've also been, Diane, Diana has been helping me get together the special town meeting for tomorrow. So we have that all set up and I should be there between nine and nine 30 tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. <laughs> um, any, anything else at all? I have also taken a zoom course on the drug testing for the CDL drivers. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, those will probably start popping up that they're gonna have to get tested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it usually does kind of happen during the summer season. Yeah. Yeah, which didn't feel a whole lot like summer lately, but we're getting <laughs> there. Okay. And anything else at all, Robin? I am in the process of going towards putting the dog licenses on NIMREC. As okay. to doing the handwritten copies out. That mm -hmm. way, the dog licenses will be able to talk to Brandy's modules. Okay, that'd be interesting. Yeah, that would seem like gonna make things a little less cumbersome. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, and have you been basically just kind of calling people up and reminding them that, that they still need to license their dogs, or? I wrote up a letter and sent it out to okay. everybody that still had an unlicensed dog. Mm -hmm. And I have copies of all of the ones that I had sent out still here in the office. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then will that eventually, the people who haven't responded, does that eventually go to Kim Silk or? How, That's how, my the... understanding. Okay. My yeah. understanding is as of May 1st, he gets them. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that, I think that's kind of how I remember the process. But... Any questions at all for, for Robin, anyone? I'm good. They, they may have to come in there and steal a few tables and chairs tomorrow night because they still have class for the, they'll bring them over to the fire station. So that might happen around 5.30 or something. Okay. That's plenty. Yeah. We can make that work. Okay. I was going to get ahead of it, but I've been gone all day. So. <laughs> so Diana, did you have something? Well, I just wanted to say that I have Robin set up on the, uh, election management system mm -hmm. and we've been through that a few times as far as updating the checklist and uh, we've been through the vital records information system a few times whenever a death or birth certificate comes in. Um, I also wanted to, uh, this is an, really another subject, but to suggest that the town make a donation to Front Porch Forum because we do use that quite a lot for our we do, yeah. and yeah. so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, we could, we'll make that an adjustment to the agenda. How does that sound? Good. I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah. I as well. I think it's actually, a, it's a really, it's, it's really one of the ways that we fundamentally reach out. So it right. is, it definitely is. We use it a lot. It's, it's really know, an I, asset I feel, I feel to like us. We should, pay in, we should be paying into that system if, yes. we, should, if we can. Anybody have a suggestion about how much to, to contribute? Uh, Diana, you suggested a hundred dollars. Is that the kind of thing they're looking for? Well, you know, it, it's a token. You know, so compared I'll, I'll to make what that we pay for motion. newspaper ads and stuff, it, it's uh it's not very much. A couple hundred would be better, I think. Well, I'll make a motion for two hundred dollars then. Okay. Do I hear a second? Uh, can I amend the motion to make it three hundred? Please. I'll make it three hundred. Then you can just a, okay. a second it. Let's see. Do I hear four hundred? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll just a friendly amendment to two hundred or three or six three hundred. I'll I'll go ahead with that. So that would be approved. Uh, motion accepted there. Okay. Yep. Motion accepted for three hundred. Okay. Um, uh, any I mean, any as more? An example, as, as an example, uh, you know, as a as a family, we use this a lot, and we as a family we pay a hundred hundred bucks, which okay. is about what we would pay to get the gazette. <clears throat> So um, mm -hmm. I think for the town to pay 300, I, I think that's a, it's better than a token. Because we, we use it a lot. We do use it a lot. lot. Yeah. And we do rely on it for outreach. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And our mint postings and whatnot. So yeah, it's, it's so. essential for, our, for the public postings that we're required to do. Yeah. yeah. Especially so. since the newspaper is not on paper anymore. I don't know how many people read the Gazette online. A, a lot of people do. I do, but I know. do, but I do occasionally when I get to doesn't, it. Doesn't doesn't make this any less critical in a way. Right. right. Yeah. Right. So, um, any any other discussion about this donation to Front Porch Forum? All right. Um, all those in favor of making a three hundred dollar donation to Front Porch Forum, say aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Okay, all, sounds like we're good. Um, okay, good. Um, anything else for um, the town clerk or the assistant town clerk? Okay, looks like we're ready for the town treasurer's report then. Hello, Brandy. Uh, better move it up a little closer. The mic's not quite picking up for you. This doesn't help the chunkiness of my face at all. I have a chunky face. We're good. <laughs> it's the camera. It's nothing else. Right. <laughs> It adds like 50 pounds. That's what it is. That's right. TV always adds weight. You got so it. Don't worry about it. That's what I'm going with. All right. So financially in the last two weeks, uh, we took in our third quarter of Swenson. Um, mm -hmm. That was $8,754.45. We have taken in dog licenses. Um, a donation to the library, prepaid taxes. Thank you, thank you. Um, we took in another library donation and then a conservation donation for the town forest. Okay. Which was super nice, thank you. Yeah. Um, let's see here. So last Friday, Robin and I took a field trip training to Morrisville Town Clerk and got to walk through the vault, their books, their, their um, as far as the, the um, treasures aspect, there's gonna be some new, new updating things coming in the next new fiscal year. Um, I will be getting a credit card machine. I will be doing, putting out with tax bills. It's a um, direct deposit form. So if you want to fill this out, put your routing number, account number, <coughs> Um, the day before taxes are due, I will go on and do the transfers into our checking. You won't have to worry about sending a check-in, um, and I'll do it all on my end. So that's an option I'm putting out. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah. So um, what else? So I ordered a glass container that's going to go out here on the porch so that Items aren't going to blow away. Minutes will be there. It'll be unlocked. Um, oh, great. Yeah, that's that's definitely a crowded space out there these days. It nice is. To have it. After seeing how Morrisville is very organized and <laughs> it, it um, and we're constantly picking stuff up off the stairs or out in the driveway. Yeah. So this way it'll be and I'm hoping um, they have actual forms available. So you don't have to come into the office that that I'm hoping there'll be room for not making any promises, but but um, zoning permits, um, just stuff that, that that people can just grab off there and, and mm -hmm. fill it out and mail it back or drop okay. it off, scan it, just easier convenience for everybody. Yeah, I think the bigger, the better, too, that, you know, the little cork board that's there is you know, totally inadequate for what get po gets posted there, so. Yeah, I ended up ordering a two by three. Okay. Um, so it'll fill that perfect spot. We can drop the cork board and if there's advertising, if anybody wants to pin it up down uh -huh. at the bottom, mm -hmm. there'll still be room for that or business cards. Um, yep. I did order a, a key box. Instead of keys being in my drawer or in Diana's drawer or this holds 48 keys and they'll be all labeled and organized. And then that way, if Whoa. one comes missing, it's not going to be my fault. <laughs> um, as long as people know where to look for it, I guess. Yep. Right, right. Um, other things. So AP. So I'm hoping Chuck will touch base on this because um, I don't believe Greg is with us tonight, but um, I was talking to Greg about um, the sand bid being up and needing a renewal. 
And yeah. he made a comment that they have plenty of sand for next year that we will not need to go out for bid for at least a year, which yay, that, sa that saves That's us $28,000. Um, yeah. I was pretty excited about that. Yeah, I was wondering about that because the pile is pretty big and they didn't use much this winter and there's still more, some more to haul, I'm assuming. Still more to haul, yeah. Yeah, right. there's about 600 yards more to come in there. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, we so, should probably, well. Yeah. Yep, what was that, Michael? There was just a thought that I started to have and then realized that I was thinking we should probably let Gravel know that we wouldn't be doing that, but um, then I thought- I can well, maybe, send out an email. I talked okay. to the secretary. Yeah, yeah just, just to let them know that we're, that we're gonna hold off a year on putting out the, the bid. Um, yep, we can do that. Yeah. So the other thing that I've been trying to do um, behind the scenes is updating the HERF schedule um, and incorporating, um, we have the appropriation that, that we do every year, mm -hmm. and then we do the Swenson income and then our expenses. So trying to come down to... Oh, Anticipating, because right now there is 64,000 in the HERF. Yeah, and is that after spending the money on the, the mower um, brush cutter? So, no. Yep, so if you look in your financial statements, mm -hmm. let's see. The, the do to do from form. So you, if you go on to page 10, it's part of the highway, yeah. down toward the bottom where it says her transfer. Yeah. So after paying for that piece of equipment, they're out of that. $56,506.37 is what I transferred over to the HERP after paying for that piece of equipment. Okay. I add, added that item line. So we now have it listed. Um, the bore attachment for the $51,077.37. Did you say 61000 We paid... 51,000. 51,000. Okay. $51,077.37. For the, for the brush cutter more. Yeah. The mowing attachment. Yep. Yeah. And I, okay. I contacted BLCT and increased the insurance coverage on the loader mm -hmm. um, while it's on there. Okay. Great. So, um, yep. So with the, um, with this transfer, how much does that give us in the HERF fund? So if you go to do to do from on the last page of your yeah. financial statements, there's $62,741.59. Okay. So that will increase. We have one more installment from Swenson's mm -hmm. to finish off this fiscal year. Yeah. Um, again, estimating. Because they've been, the deposits have been low. Yeah, the last couple times from Swenson's, mm -hmm. um, but even if we estimated another five thousand um, going into there, yeah. Um, and then with the new fiscal year, um, when does when does another um, you see we pay out on the um, low pro and the uh, bucket loader in yep. October? Correct. Okay, and then would those would, are the only two payments we have. Yeah. is those two. And yeah. then whatever's left over, I'll transfer. So transfer the again, there's the 90,000. I pay those two bills. Whatever's left over is what is in that item line. And I trans it, transfer it over to the HER fund. Yeah. So it would so, be, a, yeah. So roughly it would be about $31,000 for those two payments combined. So we would have maybe 60,000 um, roughly. I'm, these are all ballpark figures out of my head. So we would have about $120,000. Um, the reason I'm kind of thinking this out loud is that we probably should make a commitment um, 
put out an RFP and you know put out a bid for a bid for a new truck. I'm thinking this summer because it takes about a year in order for you know when you kind of commit to purchasing one um, before you actually get it. And it would probably not even get here. We'd have enough time to put another payment in there. Exactly. Yeah. So, so I'm just thinking that out loud. We can discuss it yep. more yep. later. Um, but just um, it does look like we might have enough yep. money by the time it comes to pay for it. And we were able to defer. Um, it, would, it would depend on who we purchased the truck from. But we have had a, the opportunity to defer um, payment for almost a year. Um, so and and to have that pay, payment be on October first, when when we have um, if we actually ordered the chassis, but it didn't arrive till it could be shipped to Viking, so right. we didn't actually have to pay for it for a year. Yeah, right. yeah. So, okay, we'll okay. So we'll keep that in mind, and and um, we'll be discussing that at some point. So by here. next select board meeting, um, you'll each have a copy of the HERC schedule. Okay. Um. So you can, and so I'll be updating it. Um, quarterly when we get the deposits from the Swensons, adjusting okay. it so you can see the actual, um, yeah. Okay, great. And, and we're, we putting, can... we're putting 55% of the Swenson yeah, into the, into the HERF fund. Okay. And, great. Um, can I get a question on that? Oh, sorry. Yep. Um, is it this October that the loader and the low pro are paid off? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, I think the the loader might be paid off this October. The low pro, um, I think, has a couple, maybe three more years. I'm not exactly sure, but I know the low pro won't be paid off. Okay. But the uh, bucket loader may be. I know we're, we're getting close to the end on those payments. Okay. The bucket loader, we're paying about $6,000 a year for it um, and about $25,000 for the low pro. So Chuck? Yeah. So the loader will be finished paying off in 24. Okay, so we got a couple. And the low pro will be finished being paid off in 26. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll send around this working um, her fund so everybody can see and then. Yeah, because yeah, it seems like it's, it's working. We'll have enough money to buy a truck, so. Think so. Yes. Yeah. yeah um, and what's going to happen with the money that would be going to the sand? That's a separate budget item. That has nothing to do with the HERF fund. That's within the highway. Oh, that money. Yeah. Well, we'll probably spend it on culverts. Like hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Chris had a question. We're going now. We're looking for a deficit. There's going to be a deficit in the highway. Yeah. Is that unfortunately? So yeah. that'll help. That'll help cushion it. <laughs> okay, I'm just asking that because I don't. Yeah. I I know every every penny. Let's mm -hmm. account for it. You know, I'm I'm looking for it because I don't yeah. I don't want to end up having to be making payments on trucks. No, that's I the know. goal is not to be making any more payments. It's yeah. a lot of interest in yeah. Yep. So, Chris, yeah. did you have? Are you all, all done, Chuck, for the moment? Uh, yeah, the only thing, okay. one other thing I guess I would say is that Chris and I have been talking to Swinsons about that stone. And, okay. Um, I'm not sure, but I was sort of under the assumption that the payment that Swinson was going to make us was going to go towards that stone. Whoa. Ooh. And I'm not sure. Maybe Chris has got something different, but. Okay, well, yeah. let's say that for the town highway report. Okay. So, Chris, did you have a question for Brandy or? Well, I had another question related to this. And when we're talking about a new truck, do we, do, do we try to buy auction trucks from the state or, or are we talking about new, new trucks? This would be probably a new, new truck, which would have a, at least a five year warranty on it. Okay. So, we don't consider um taking advantage of state auction trucks at all we can do we that can be part of the discussion i have you know i have no opinion one way or the other i think what we want to do is get something that we can rely on um so, but that can be that can be a part of the discussion well I, I, i'm only asking because um 
I know other towns refit trucks that are, are purchased from state mm -hmm. um, and have some success with them. Yeah. But uh, I guess maybe Chuck, Paul, um, I'm, I'm just curious. I'm very new at this, so excuse me if I'm if I'm if I'm off base here. You're not. But, uh, there, You're not. there are there are potential for us to to get good state, well maintained trucks um, that aren't new mm -hmm. and that are not warranted at all. Mm -hmm. So I mean, and we don't have the capacity to really fix big things, so we have to ship them out for that. But I'm just curious as to whether or not that's something we would consider. Um, yeah, we'll definitely consider it. Yeah, it's worth, it's worth discussing. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Brandy, I have a couple questions uh, from the financials. Um, on, on the general budget, um, the line item for wages for town hall, is that paying, um, well, I guess it was Robin paying them for overseeing the booking of the town hall. Is that what that line item is? I don't ever remember it. And it's been zero for a stretch here. Robin gets a stipend for, okay. for, for maintaining, taking care of the town hall, the rentals okay. and heating, turning on, cleaning. Yep. Okay. So it looks like we owe her the 2020 stipend then. I owe a lot of people at the end of at, at okay. the end of June. <laughs> okay, all right, I get it. That's all the selectmen. I I owe. Yeah, there's a bunch yeah. that. Yeah, you I owe us big up. time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting. Right. Um, so um, and then uh, under the general budget, um, general expenses. There's the municipal roads general permit annual dues or the MRGP annual dues. <clears throat> We should probably move that to the town highway budget because it is about town roads. Um, and we, I don't know if you want to combine it with that other, but it's sort of like two annual payments that we make. One is for just the, the general permit um, in general, I guess I'll call it. And the other is it's called a processing fee for processing any reporting that we do. Um, okay. Um, we could combine them or we one could be called the MRGP annual dues and the other could be called the MRGP processing fees. And the, the $240 is the processing fees. And then the 1350 is the annual dues. We'll be doing a, a webinar workshop on um, the reporting for the municipal roads general permit on Wednesday morning. And Chuck, I have you signed up for that. So, That's Wednesday, right? Yeah, 9 to 10.30. Paul, you're welcome to join it if you have the time. Um, it's, um, it's a webinar um, uh, put on by um, the, um, Jim Ryan and someone else from a &R for the um, online uh, recording of um, and reporting for the uh, municipal roads general permit. Okay. It's the stuff that I've been trying to learn. Um, and I know Chris, Chris has said that he signed up. Um, I'm Hello. signed up and I did sign. When, when is it again? Uh, it's Wednesday morning, nine to 1030. What's that? This Wednesday? Could, this this Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, I can't, 28. I won't be able to. Okay, I won't be able, I gotta be in, I gotta be in uh, so. At, oh. So yeah. it's mostly just for learning how to do the, um, a lot of the reporting for it is, is oh, basically okay. like a yearly yeah. report that you um, Here we will. Yeah. <laughs> Diana, can you mute your mic? <laughs> okay, she's running to the vault, good. Um, it's most of this webinar is focused on um, how to do the reporting um, for any of the road work that gets done, I mean, there's a, I think there is some work that was done last summer that um, I'm kind of clueless on what happened. Um, Wait, yeah. I, and you know, it hasn't been reported and I've never been able to, I had a, a training schedule just before the pandemic hit to learn how to go on the web. There's a website for it and you click in the road segments and, and check off um, things that were needed to be done on it. Um, okay. So I think most of it is focused on that. Um, but, um, and Jim Ryan, who's, who's the head of the program, the Minnesota Regional Permit will be 
doing a presentation and then there's some um, IT web person that's going to um, do another part of it. But so and there, I, usually there's a recording that they send to people who attend it and could forward that on to you um, when it comes to us and and you could watch it in your leisure. Um, and that would work. Just this yeah. week's not going to work. It's my on call right. week too, so they've been yeah. torturing me. I'm sure it's not going to improve. And I also talked to Jim. Um, I, you know, he had offered a few years ago to come out and just kind of do a general on site, on the road kind of um, what needs to be done, what to look for with berms and crowns and all of that stuff that we've been kind of hashing about mm -hmm. for a couple of years now. Um, I'd like to, to see if he, I mean, he said he would be willing to do that. And I'd like to maybe try to schedule a time that he could come out and maybe, you know, all of the select board members, um, Chuck, the road crew, we could all kind of um, uh, get a lesson from him um, if, if we want. He's willing to do that. Okay. Um, just have to I think it'd be good for the road crew to see. Yeah. I think it would be good. Yeah. And they, they had been kind of reluctant, but. Um, We'll just make them do it. Yeah, we'll let it fire. It would be good. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I don't think there's any one of us that wouldn't benefit from understanding right. understanding yeah. this. Yeah. Diana, your, your mic is off. You got to turn your mic on. Okay. okay. I had to take a call. So I just wonder who you're talking about now. Uh, we're talking about the municipal roads general permit. Right. Um, we're talking about a couple of light items in the budget, and and now we've gotten on to a webinar that um, that some of us will be attending on Wednesday morning. Yeah, I got I got that part, and then you're talking about somebody coming to town. Yeah, and then I, I was talking about Jim Ryan, who Ryan, is the head okay. yeah, head of the municipal roads general permit, uh, coming to town and giving us a tutorial. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Oh, right. You're taking taking notes. I forgot right. about that. <laughs> I don't want to miss anything. No, I, don't, I want them in the notes, too. It's very helpful to me. And uh, um, yeah, and I don't want to have to go back and watch HCTV. I don't blame you. Um, so those those are my questions about the um, financials, Brandy. Just those. I wanted to point that out to you. Um, so we don't spend any of that highway budget money in our general budget. So. Any anything else for Brandy at all that anyone has? Any questions or any other comments, Brandy, that you might have for town treasurer report? Sounds like we're good. No. No. Um, so let's move on to the mowing bids. Um, there are a couple of members of the cemetery commission here. Um, bing, and of course. Bing. Yes. Yeah. All right. There they are. Um, so the mowing bids, you know, it's the pr primarily it's for the cemeteries, um, but there is a little bit of town mowing that goes on too. So, um, and generally the select board has has um, kind of gone with the decision that the cemetery commission makes, um, and then we do the official uh, financial uh, approval. Um, so Patty, I know in an email um, that you sent to me that you had some concerns about the bids that we received. Uh, maybe if you could share those. Well, we've only gotten two bids. Yeah. And one was from the guy who did it last year. Mm -hmm. um, didn't seem like he did a great job. Okay. But he was reasonable. And um, I don't know if Brandy was going to check to see if he had workman's comp because it wasn't marked on his uh, certificate of liability insurance. Mm -hmm. The other guy, he, he was like $19,000 for the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to take uh, $200 to just mow the Buck Lake Cemetery. So I think he's bringing either his rabbits or his goats and he's going to let them do it. <laughs> That's, mm -hmm kind of high. And so I think we really. Oh. Hmm? What's the other bid total? He doesn't have a total. He goes by um, $100 per okay. mowing for all the town properties. Mm -hmm. The guy, so that's DNR. Jay Milne had the same $100 per mowing for all town properties. 
It's on the mowing for the cemeteries, which uh, DR charges 550 per mowing. When you add up what Jay Milne does, it's $2,100 per mowing. Okay. Oh. I'm, try I'm trying to find the mowing um, total for um, oh, I have that paper here. I, I have it right in front of me, actually. Um, well, I have the town part. I don't have the cemetery part. Is Brandy still available there? Maybe she can help us with this. Brandy, are you frozen? Oh, Brandy's frozen? Oh. Yeah, it was a cold day today, wasn't it? <laughs> you guys need a wood stove down there. So, Brandy, do you... Could you find for us how much we spent last year um, for the mowing for both the town and the um, cemeteries? Do you yep. have a rough? For the, for the cemeteries, it was around 4,500 for the year. Okay. And what about the town's portion, which I actually have in front of me, or I had it. Um, where did it go? Uh, So I had a uh, $325 for the town office and uh, $7,400 for the park and the hall. So let's call that $8,000. So that was about, that was 12, let's say 12, 500 for, for a total. Um, what are you looking at for 70 something? All right. How much we paid for the park and the... Um, I think that includes the grant from the uh, uh, the Myers, the Woodbury Fund for the landscaping in the new park. Yeah. Okay, well, it's, it's under mowing. Yeah, um, it was, yeah well, we, we had to track review. We had to track the grant without okay. it being part of the FEMA. Okay. So it was not, it was not part of the... the um, all right, so it's even less than, than yes. the- um, Yes, yes. Even less than that. So were there major objections with the person that did the mowing last year or just, what were, what were some of the um, things that you he were- just, He missed some spots, which I would like to, if he does get the bid, go out there with him and just, I okay. guess like little by little, he was just, oh, we don't have to do this. And right. I don't know, somebody told me he doesn't like to pick up sticks. <laughs> they don't like to get off their little buggies i know that yeah but i think the big thing concern would be like whether he has workman's comp like whether he's doing it all by himself or whether he does have employees and they're not covered oh brandy can certainly fill us in on that because i know that's her concern also so a big thing i talked with vicky a bear he does not have workers comp um, he does sign the sole proprietor saying he does not have any employees working with him while he is mowing, which we have, I mean, you, you can see when he, he, he mows the park, he has somebody with him. Um, at that point, Vicki said, you tell them to get off your property. He broke contract. And um, yeah, because if, if his employee that he brings with him gets hurt, that's against the uh -huh. town. It's and, on the town, yeah. And, um, okay. So right off the bat, I he does not have workers comp. He did send me a certificate for liability. Um, so he does have insurance coverage as far as that, but it's it's um, in stone. If, if you do not have workers comp, you cannot have another employee or anybody with you while he's mowing the town properties. Mm -hmm. And that needs to be discussed. So if he wins the bid, that's fine. But he cannot have anybody with him on the property. Um, he signs that it's a contract, and a contract is a contract. Yeah. Does anybody have any idea of what it would cost him to have workman's comp? Um, from what I was told, it was around two grand a year uh -huh. per so person per worker. That I don't know. I just know that people in the past that have when it came down to us as the town saying, you have to have workers comp coverage um, if you have employees with you that they couldn't afford and it wasn't justifiable um, to pay the workers comp. So if, if we asked him to- in for a second and I'll just yep. yeah, look this up briefly. And it was 2250 per um, other employee. Okay. So it's per, it's per employee. Per employee, okay. Per employee. 
So um, that's, that cost is gonna go up pretty quick. Yeah. So if, if we were to, to tell this person that, um, okay, we're willing to award you the contract, but you need to have workman's comp for any employee that you will have on our property when you're mowing or working, you know, working on town properties um, and just put that in as part of your part of the bid, which would obviously up it some, but it doesn't sound like it would still get anywhere close to what the second bid was. Um, and, and tell the person that if you aren't willing to do that, then you don't have a contract with the town. And then we'll just have to either go with the second person or, or put the you know RFP out again and try to find other people that might be interested. Does that sound like a plausible are you suggesting, plan at all? Are you suggesting offering more money so that he can buy workers comp? I am suggesting that if he wants the contract that he um, needs to have workman's comp and if he wants to add that to the bid that we would consider that bid, yes. Oh, that's generous. Well, it would still be less than the, the other bid that 19, we're looking 19,000. <laughs> yeah. Right, and that other bid, the, the Jay Milner, that's 19,000, that's only mowing some of those cemeteries five times a year five oh, times, no. which is 17 weeks. And so only more five times isn't really gonna yield a good result. No. It's funny, how did he get some, if he's only, if he's charging the same rate per hour, yeah. how does he get such a higher figure? And, he, and he's only gonna be there five times. Well, he's driving from West Topsom. So he's probably- Oh, paying yeah, that, that, oh, you know, oh so really? He's paying for his mileage. I mean, I suppose our other position could be that um, his bid is what it is. And we're accepting his, and if we find um, a second employee, that'll be terminated. Yeah. That's, that's easier than option. sending it back. He needs to comply with his contractual agreement. That way we're not getting into the middle of how much more we should be charging because then we'll probably right. have to go back and bid again. Yeah. You're talking about the DR guy? The guy yeah. we had last year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because it would seem to, it would be helpful if, if you went around and showed him what you were unhappy with last year for sure. And yeah. we'll make it very clear that we will be watching. And if you have any employees, you will be terminated. Yep. Can I say something here? Yeah. I know when with my uh, uh, liability insurance, that if I'm going to have somebody else working with me, I can have them and not pay workman's comp on them, but it's a sub, they have to be a subcontractor. Well, that's yeah. a possibility. I would think uh, the, the other person would have to sign the waiver then. Exactly. So that's possible. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah, I, would we, we have should... to pay them separately? No, he's a subcontractor for the person we hired. Yeah. No, he would be the one to pay, but he would be a subcontractor of his, not uh, actually an employee. Okay. So we that's should possible. probably, yeah, we should probably have Brandy check in with Vicki Abair and make sure that that's passes muster with um, passive, our insurer. Well, I, I know, know I know in the real world of the, you know, co uh, construction that that's the way it's done. I, the, yeah. That's why you hire people to do concrete and everything. They're a subcontractor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, this, this is kind of in the state world, which sometimes is a little different that's from the real saying, world. <laughs> that's why I'm saying, I'm not sure how it works there, but. Yeah. You know, um, well, that's why um, I don't know if Brandy is, I mean, she's probably trying to get that other computer to work, but um, Diana, yeah. could you ask Brandy to, to rejoin us just so we can um, kind of discuss this with, with her? Yeah, I don't know what's up with that laptop. I can't get it to work. It's frozen. Yeah, well, oh well, to hit it with a hammer. Right. Um, so we, we've had a couple of thoughts on this, um, and one of them is to um, for Patty to meet with this guy. She has some things with the cemetery mowing that she wanted to show him, but also mentioned to him that um, if he's not going to have workman's comp, that he can't have anybody working for him. And if we catch him or see him working, having someone working with him, the contract is void. That's yep. it. Um, the other funny. option... Patty, if you feel comfortable, if you want to meet here to meet him, and then I can explain that so you don't have to, it's not put on your shoulders. Okay. I'm more than happy to do that. Okay. And then sure. the, others, the other 
possibility that Chuck mentioned is that sometimes when you know he doesn't have workman's comp and sometimes if he hires someone to work with him, they're basically a subcontractor and, mm -hmm. and he's not required to do that. So I was wondering if, if you could check with Vicki Bear and see you know, if this guy um, that did the mowing last year, if he wanted to go that route or if he did have somebody working for him, they would be a subcontractor. They would also have to sign that waiver um, if that would if that would pass muster with a uh, passive on it as far as okay. the, town, the town's liability. Yep, so. I can do that. Okay. All right. I'm so sorry. let's, can I ask ahead, a, Chris. Question to, uh, a quick question of you all? Um, mm -hmm. If we're talking about, you know, 15 to $20,000. Um, I don't we, think we, can, um, so. We had a bid at 19. Is that is that correct? Yes. I don't think we're talking that much. I'm, I think last year we probably spent less than um, ten thousand yeah. dollars. It's around eight thousand a year. Eight thousand. Yeah. So in two years, then we could have purchased the best mower that we could ask for. Right. Our, I, I'm sorry. No, no, uh, that's true. And, and I've had that thought that, also. I'm, buying. Just, I'm, I'm just asking um, whether or not this could be part of a town maintenance schedule where we're not contracting it all the time. And within two or three years, we've bought a high quality mower and we work it into part of sort of general maintenance schedule for, for the town. Okay. And I, I know I'm new at this, but I'm just. I'm, I'm, no, I'm just that, that's a, someone local to run it. Yeah, that's a good thought. I'm going to do the mowing. Yeah. We would have to hire, they would have to be a town employee. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've had that thought before too. Um, and, you know, we just have to be able to find someone who, I mean, we could could be somebody new every year. Um, but uh, yeah, we would have basically, in, in that point, you know, we would be maintaining the mower um, and we could probably use the knowledge of our road crew to help us with that. Um, and then we would have to hire an employee. It's it's worth discussing. Um, I think so too, sure. You know, it might not be time to get it done this year, but. Right, yeah. yeah. You're talking uh, about a three year contract though. Right, this right. We, that we put out is a for a three, three year oh, contract. For a three year. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to ask the question. No, no, no that's, that's a valid a, question. It's a good question. Because um, our, our needs have expanded over time and I've got, thought the same thing at some point it becomes yeah. more cost effective to hire our own person and mower, but. Yeah. Plus it's, it's, it does seem to be getting harder to find someone to do have this. A little more control too. Yeah. yeah. Um, now with a three year contract, can we change it to one year even though we put the bid out for three? I don't see why we couldn't. I don't, I don't see why not. Okay. I mean, we, we put it out just, for three years last year and nobody take it. So we had to change it. it to a one. So, yeah. Right. Um, why don't we, how do we feel about doing that? That sounds like, you know, then we can explore this other option a little bit. Yep. Um, sounds good. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I, I, um, Chris, would, Chris would agree. Okay. So, do our secondary commissioners agree with that? Think that's a good thing to look at. I do. I want to do your job for you. <laughs> <laughs> there room in the uh, garage for a mower? Uh, we'll find room somewhere. Are we gonna have a mower and a weed whacker, <laughs> or a nice pair of clippers and some gloves? <laughs> Got a mower down in the basement. Uh, Don Mason used to mow this area here. Okay. <laughs> still got the, but yeah, pretty old. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's, yeah, so it sounds to me like it would, might be good to just to go with a one-year contract and try to have some kind of understanding with this person yep. um, before we award it. Um, and do you think we should try to get, have some terms in writing that he, that person would sign just so we have something in writing? Well, it already it? says what the rules are. The okay. contract, the contract right. says it, so we just have to enforce the terms. Okay. Uh, I don't even think we need to get uh, that far into the weeds of subcontract. Just a matter of, you know, if you we come in and if you have a subcontractor, they have to fill out the same uh, uh, waiver. Okay. Um, 
we don't get we're not concerned with who you hire it's just uh, they have to fill the waiver out right okay just right. like you I did oh it's pretty explicit if you look at the contract yep, it is yeah. and um uh, and uh, brandy will check with um, the lct passive to make sure that that's okay with them because yeah it isn't okay with them even if it's kind of no, the way things right. might be okay. done then then they, they come down on the town about it <clears throat> you mean the subcontractor thing yeah correct Okay, that sounds good. So they're gonna to get together with us, uh, Brandy and get this resolved, hopefully. Yes. Okay, like perfect. It. Okay. Anything else about the mowing for, for this year? I was just curious, I just wrote down these numbers. So I thought in the past, um, it was a lot, I guess I, went, I didn't have the town Somebody said the town's eight thousand dollars and the cemeteries were forty five hundred. No, that's not correct. Oh, uh, that's what he said, but it's not correct. <laughs> I was reading that from the financial report, but there's an extra expense for the place where the old store used to be. The uh, the the um, landscaping of that was added into oh. the mowing thing, oh, which okay. I so I the remember. Town properties were like two thousand, maybe two or three thousand. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's always come, you know, before the town properties were involved, it always went under this, you know, I think it's kind of a $7,000 yearly budget for the cemetery commission, and it was always under that. Yeah. And then I, I think the town, adding the town properties um, got it a little bit over. Um, That's when we so found out we were not allowed to have uh, volunteers do mowing. Right. That's, so that's, that's another... That's a state requirement. That's part of this whole thing with having workman's comp. Um, right. We can't, we, you know, we used to have like a, um, a inmates come and do work for, for nothing. Um, we can't do that anymore. Um, you, we can't have a local high school person, you know, mow the town properties um, because the town's liable if they get hurt. It's- Wait, don't the, the, the big cemetery in Montpelier, Green Mountain, don't they have inmates come and mow? Maybe they do. They probably pay yeah. pay for liability for that. I, I, would oh. I mean, that's a guess on my part. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. But. So. So, so, so can Brandy tell him that he can go ahead with a one year contract if he's interested and with well, all the associated warnings? Brandy and Patty, I think it's my understanding that Brandy and Patty and other folks from the Cemetery Commission are going to meet with him and kind of spell out what we've discussed tonight. Um, and if he's in agreement to that, then we would award the contract to him um, mm -hmm. once they've met. And, and once if everything is OK and he's OK with with what they've discussed with him, then then we'll go ahead. So you're not going ahead right now? No, we aren't. Okay. No. So maybe, you know, I, I know that May, the Memorial Day weekend is a big one to have everything done. So yep. if you guys could could um, maybe have this happen between now and our next select board meeting, which would be um, May 10th, we could make a formal yeah, the 10th. decision then. And if it's informal, you know, we could just, you know, if, if it's all in agreement and it's communicated to the select board that everything was okay, we can sort of, um, you know, award the contract um, mm -hmm. and then officially award it at our select board meeting. Yeah. So we can informally award it. I, guess. I think we'd be okay doing that just in, for time's sake. If it, okay. I mean, I know he's been wanting to know whether he's yeah. going to get the contract. Yeah. Right. So they just got to meet and they'll get it worked out and bring it back to us. Yep. Sounds like oh. a plan. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you for Thank your you work. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, town highway report. Ding. Leave me. <laughs> Leave me out, Scotty. Yeah. <laughs> Canceled for lack of interest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, the boys are still fighting with East Hill with the mud. Um, yeah, I've been hearing about a little bit about that. 
Yeah, I was up there yesterday. It's looking pretty good. He was up with a grader today, so it should mm -hmm. start shaping up now. Okay, great. Uh, at some point, not this year, but at some point, we're going to have to think about putting some drainage in there mm -hmm. from that from that four corners back this way. So okay. Bliss Road down toward the sharp corner. I think it's East Hill beyond the four yeah, corners. No. Beyond the up, uphill from the short uh, four corner. Yeah, the high corner. Yeah. Okay. Well, right. below it, where it's broke up right now. Oh, okay. Right. Below it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Where they put where, all that. Where those kind of clay boils are. Yeah. Uh, I got you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So at some point, that really needs some drainage dug mm -hmm. up and put some drainage down in there. Okay. Get rid of that water so that it doesn't keep surfacing like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and above it on the above the four corners there for a ways too, it could stand something. Mm -hmm. Like in front of Jamie Benjamin's and and uh, Dana Hoppings right there. Okay, just so just above it then. Yeah. Yeah. And then, well, it, there's been a soft spot up by the golf course too, but I don't know mm -hmm. how bad that was. Yeah. yeah. Um, but those two spots right there, at some point, we're going to have to think about doing something with them. Or okay, the road is just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. they, two years ago, they Greg said they put like 50 loads of stuff in there and it's gone. It's gone. Totally. Just yeah. Who right knows where it is? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It ain't yeah. where you're going to get it with a gritter. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. That, yeah. East Hill is our, I think, our worst road for mud season. Yeah. Uh, well, the Cabot Road, they put a lot of stuff in up there, but it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so. Um, okay. and we're going to do a top coat resurface top coat on the bottom of Foster Hill, at least over to Gary's and maybe mm -hmm. up the hill just a little bit. Okay. And I'm in hopes to get that started next week. Mm -hmm. So that stretch of road right there is pretty rough. Okay, yeah. Um, like I say, I didn't get home till Friday, so I really don't have a lot to report right now. Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that, um, first of all, I did get the two municipal highway grants in on time, and right. we, should be, we should be hearing about them um, early, in early May. Cool. So, um, and that's for the resurfacing of the Cabot Road and for the uh, design work for the a box culvert on uh, Valley Lake Road. Um, oh, yeah. And then, and then um, Shauna Clifford got a hold of me late last week. We are going to be transferred out of District 7. Um, and there's going to be a, a newly reformed uh, District 6. Um, wow, so what's, what's old is new again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're going to be back in District 6. And I always, I didn't know that they, I th always thought that District 6 continued and we were just. No, they got out. rid of it. They got rid of it. Years ago. Yeah, so they're going to reform it. Um, and so I got to reprogram my radios again. <laughs> you really? Yeah, because we got we got the I but I got it so we can talk to their highway trucks, but they'll change the frequency on us. Again, so it's a pain. Yeah, and Shauna says right at the moment they don't really know when this is going to happen fairly mm -hmm. soon, but they don't have no no set date for when the it'll actually happen. So um, we're still in District Seven. We'll still be working with Shauna and Clifford and Logan Perrin. Till they they'll, fully transition. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, and so they'll be making the, you know, they'll be kind of overseeing those two grants. Um, Michael, I was curious when I saw that email from you, what was the justification for that change? Did, did I have they no idea. Having worked know. in state government for a long time, uh, <laughs> they just, it, it, it was done. I don't know, you go back to why they changed it in the first place, now they said it didn't work, so we're changing it back. Right. So somebody was in charge of changes, I think. Yeah, I mean we we had a we had a good working relationship with the former District Six. Yeah. Um, that was just I think just as I came on to the select board, and and then the change happened maybe a year or two after I've been on the select board. And of course we had a great working relationship with Shauna Clifford and this new person that's getting you know kind of training to take her place seemed like a. A good person too but so it's kind of yeah. it's, a, it's a little bit of a disappointment but um but you know the state guy i i just last week pulled out some 10 year old emails for the latest change of doing it our work to say oh no we tried this before 
here's all the paperwork from last time. And then they look at you funny. But that's it. Sometimes it's just like that new idea, which isn't all that new. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we'll just kind of wait and find out when it's actually going to um, come about. Um, but sometime, sometime. Yeah, it sounds like it's a done deal. It's just they're transitioning it's leadership. Deal. It's a done deal. Yeah. They're kind of, they have to reform or find. Right. You got to have new, new bosses and new oversight. And yeah. so, it has a lot to do with what equipment's available where. Mm hmm. One of the issues I know that a lot of the stuff they need, like an excavator, hot boxes and whatnot, are all up in St. Johnsbury, which isn't exactly handy. Right. Your vehicle maintenance places in St. Johnsbury or Lindenville yeah. or North Montpelier. So it's not not particularly handy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll we'll wait and see. <laughs> um, and then I, I want to set up a meeting with Alan May. Um, yeah, to, he's he's the better roads guy. I was kind of waiting until you got back, Chuck. Um, and uh, we'll it'll be it'll basically be a site visit. We'll have the design plans that um, that uh, Nate worked on for, um, from Ruggles um, that, that we have, and I'll, I'm going to send those to. I've got a digital copy now um, that Nate sent to me last week. I'm going to send it on to Alan, and I I meant to send it on to you, Chuck. I may I don't know if I did that or not. Mm, I don't think I, don't. I did. I don't think I've done it yet, but um, I have it, and I will do it. Um, I'll send it on to everybody actually. And we have some nice paper copies too, um, which are definitely much easier. I'll have a digital read. copy of that. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Um, so uh, I'll try to have that happen as soon as we can. Are there days that are, I know Tuesdays and Fridays are better for me. They're kind of open days and. Yeah, that's the, that's the same for me. Okay. Then again, more the more lead time I have, usually I can arrange my schedule so I don't fill those times. Okay. Tuesdays so, are usually an office day. Okay. So if I looked out into, um, let's say, the second week of May, maybe after our first select board meeting or maybe or the week before, what would be a, a good amount of lead time? Of course, and that I'm, would I'm good right the, now for... Any, yeah, anything two weeks two weeks out is open on Tuesdays right now. Okay, so let's let's focus on Tuesdays and so right now we'll kind of look at May eleventh. How's that sound? Okay. Morning, afternoon, better for. I know Probably Alan's a, for me. What's that, Chuck? Probably afternoon would be better for me. Afternoon would be better. And that's for you. fine. Yeah, that's fine for okay. me too. And, that, and it's open time for me, so that okay. We can make that work as well. Okay. All right. So I'm going to Just try send to set the up a, out. Yep. a site visit with Alan for May 11th um, in the afternoon. Let's say two, three o'clock, Chuck. One o'clock. Anytime afternoon, Don. Anytime afternoon. Okay. Might be yeah. good to have um, Greg Parkhurst there too, if we yeah. want. Yeah. Well, on a Tuesday, I think we can get him there, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I'll mention it to him tomorrow morning. No. Okay. He and Alan are old hunting buddies, I think. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Alan and I are too. He and Alan. Okay, all right. Good. You know, you know him also. Good. Yeah, oh, he, yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all I had. It seems for the, and there is, of course, there is this um. This webinar Wednesday morning, but it sounds like we're all set with that. We've already talked about that. Um, and do we want to talk a little bit more about the um? the uh gravel granite gravel from swenson did i don't think we finished that discussion no we didn't oh. well i don't know how much there is to discuss right now uh, okay chris and i were kind of batting it around that the, the money we were getting from swenson's maybe we could turn that into stone up there and i okay. just wanted to throw that out there so you weren't planning on being right. able to Right in her fund, and then all of a sudden. So are they are they talking about uh, giving us the stone, and we're just paying for the crushing, or what? What would we end up with? That's correct. So, okay. uh, what we're talking about is they will they will keep it up there. We'll pay for the crushing, which Jay McDonald is going to do. They're going to give us the stone. Yeah, I think I think that's we got that we're not going to get stone any cheaper than that. So we just got to no. figure out how we're going to deal with it. And so we could, we could uh, take. The yeah, we could take the money for the stone out of the gravel um, line item budget. 
Um, technically, that's what it, we're going to be using it for, I think. Yep. Um, that way, keep that HERF money, um, you know, intact. Um, and I guess, you know, we could kind of get a sense of how much that would be so that we would see whether or not it would, I don't want to compromise what we budgeted for gravel because we usually do kind of max out on the gravel, especially, um, um, well, this year, you know, if, if we use a lot of, which we, I assume we will be using a lot of gravel resurfacing the Cabot Road, that'll be part of the grant. So we'll be getting reimbursed for that expenditure. Yeah, I don't, I'm not too concerned about figuring out how we'll pay for it myself and okay. let's see what it is and then we'll figure out how we're going to pay because I, okay. I think it's just the way that it's definitely the least expensive thing we can do. Yeah, I agree. That I, I agree. I, yeah. I agree. Yeah, McDonald's yeah. was talking about doing it for $10 a yard. And, yeah. and if they're going to stop piling up there for, for us for $10 a yard and we can store it there, so all we got to do mm -hmm. is move our loader up when theirs is gone to to load mm -hmm. the stuff there's no there's no better home run than that one yep. okay and that's well, that's that's what I, I so i don't have a real number and i'm sorry for that i wish i that's I wish okay I, that's, that's that's all right uh, the you know chuck is right we were talking about you know 10 to 10 to 12 a yard mm -hmm. and yeah. i think that that even on the high end um we're still making a that's that's less than making making a, a good yeah. deal here um, yeah yeah. And, uh, and especially the because they're going to store it up top. Mm -hmm. The trucking is going to be the big deal. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, we'll definitely and, say we're not, and we're not going to pay for those costs because they're going to let us store it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're talking yeah. about, you know, four or five years, maybe more worth of material that mm -hmm. we can have. have and it's really good material. And it's really yeah, good yeah. material. I, I think. I think okay. granite's really good. One, one question I have about that is will that be it will the dust be an issue my i i have a grandfather that died of sil silicosis of the lung he was a stone cutter so, <laughs> so i'm a little worried about the granite the dust from the road yeah that won't be a surface material will it nope that'll be buried material right you won't okay. it won't be an okay. issue all right that's that's good to know and you put, put a lot of three-quarter stone up there yeah, we're putting big stone but, up there. Three quarter minus is what we'd be putting up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. But and uh, on the other just, hand, just, just talking to, to someone who has worked in the granite industry for a you know a good portion of his geological career, um, when you are not exposed to the actual crushing and cutting of that material, mm -hmm. that's it's really it because it's it really is not a problem anymore. right okay. right people dying of that stuff were right working in it while that was being in. chipped and ground yep and that's where my family has been exposed to for years so mine too i lost a family member many moons ago from that yep. yeah i did too and sounds like places. diana did also so so um well i'll i'll, I'll it's trust it's not a problem it's not a problem of the of the exposure once it's in in the subsurface in the Okay. It's really a, it's a processing problem. Okay. Coming well, from a geologist, I'll, I'll trust that opinion. Well, <laughs> and the other thing is we're going to want to lay chloride on it, but as soon as it's down. Okay. All you right. know, uh, it may be a little dusty while we're spreading it and laying it out, but mm -hmm. it's going to have to be chlorided every night or it's not going to stay in place. I don't Right. Okay. All right. Just like regular crushed ledge. Yep. Okay. You, yep. There shouldn't be any problem. All right. Yep, I I trust your your words. And you you put that in my driveway, Chuck. It's the same type of stuff, isn't it? Hey, hey, and I've got I, I've got no dust. It works really well. Okay. Yeah. And when uh, it gets packed, it stays there. Yeah, it packs right down. And I had very little stone that I even plowed off this year. It only took about an hour to get it back in order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works good. That's okay. the advantage of using something like a granite, um, because of the way that the grains work. They have a good interlocking texture. Right. And they hold up really well in that sort of environment, much better than if we were getting aggregate from gravel, which is more town formation, which has a very slippery surface, actually produces Come more dust in the process. Okay. Um, and the other thing about really the right approach. After the this is local. After the local. first winter, there'll be sand enough mixed with it, so you won't. There won't be no dust. Yeah. Okay. I know um, Greg and the road crew are the, the back road up to Nichols Ledge from um, Cahaga and they, that road was in really rough shape and they patched that up with a three 
inch stone and most of it was granite and it's it's rock solid there now it hasn't eroded right. at all right so that's the same so, stuff to put in brandy's driveway basically okay yeah yeah that's right oh, it that's is fair. pretty much the same yep okay um anything else about about the town highway any no, we're just working to get the roads in shape oh uh, paul has has the county road down in by your house uh, it's not bad. Just I mean, when they when they get around to grading, it'll need grading. But it's uh, Greenwood Lake's gotten pretty bumpy, but it and it's dry now. But it wasn't bad when they first honed it. If if I have good luck and it don't rain every day, they'll be out there getting this. Yeah, because the roads are dry here now, so they could hone them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I, I say, if it don't, if it ain't gonna rain hard, they'll be out there one day this week. It was it's really done. nice having them come so early because they could and get it a little bit smoothed out. So right, right. I know I've I've received a couple of complaints about Cranberry Meadow Road, and and yeah, I drive that every morning on my Beaver rounds. So and they've been working on it. I've heard them out there working on it. Yeah, they've dumped yeah. some gravel. Um, yeah. yeah. The worst on the county road is from Cranberry Meadow to the Cal Callis line. We've had some fires out there, and it's it's hummocky. It's just got to dry out. It's going to be mm -hmm. till it dries. Yeah. Okay. That's the problem. There's a lot of clay in this town. Yeah. yeah, it's just not dry yet. You, when you got those bumps that are smushy, you're nothing to do anything with them. No, no, you rip no. the top off, and you now you got the hole. Yeah, <laughs> that clay, that clay ridge bottomland is really is is really tough to work with. Mm -hmm. It is. And so I mean that it, until it's dried, there's not much you can do with that. And it's shady. The west road is so shady up that hill; it just doesn't it just get doesn't any sun. Out. Doesn't dry out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else about the town roads? Good for now. Not for me. I think I'm all set. Okay. It's good to have you back, Chuck. Yeah, good all to have you back in town. Yeah. yeah. And I appreciate your staying connected when you were down in Florida. Yes, it was uh, helpful. It was very helpful. Yeah. Well, good. good. Thanks, Chuck. Welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. So um, let's move on to the emergency generator. Um, I have, um, I was able to, I had some good discussions with people from Brookfield Services. Um, and I talked to, or actually I emailed, um, I had a little email conversation with Norm Metkin about it. But um, so first off, um, let me share the conversation I had with the technician um, from Brookfield Services. So, um, and I was basically, basically able to ask him the questions that we were coming up with at our last meeting. Um, so I asked him about the condition of the generator. That was a, a major question. And he said it, it's in decent shape, which means um, basically that it's, it's not the, in the best of shape. Um, it's not ready for the junk heap. Um, so it's in decent shape. Um, and then, you know, I talked to Norman about that too. Um, he couldn't remember exactly when um, it was put in, but- Around 98 is my recollection. Uh, yeah. He was thinking think right around yeah. 2000. Um, and Norman Norman mentioned in an email, which I think I passed on <laughs> to you guys. Um, I meant to if I didn't, um, that you know the bottom line is we want the generator to work when it needs to be working. Um, so he he kind of suggested that maybe that generator has seen its its lifespan and that we ought to think about replacing it. Um, so and then getting back to the technician, um, he you know. Um, he mentioned that he, he thought it was a little bit undersized for serving both the school and the fire station. And then I mentioned that we were thinking of also connecting the town hall to it. And he said, well, then, then he said, you know, that would definitely would be somewhat undersized. Um, so we might- And that's been it. known since day one. When that was first okay. put in, we knew it was undersized. Okay, that's so good Things like know. you can't run the elevator, you can't run the cook stoves, we can't run our water heaters, things like that. Okay. So, right. he, you know, he did recommend looking, looking thinking about at, getting a looking back at old records. I, I agree with Paul. Okay. Um, as best as I've, I've been able to look back at things. Okay. It was always undersized. Yeah, we, right. we, it was, it was designed that way. Um, you know, cause I remember the agreements we had is that we wouldn't run our air compressor. We wouldn't mm -hmm. run the water heater at the time we had a soda machine in the station. If we were going to run the generator, we had to unplug it and the school wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't cook, cook meals in the electric mm -hmm. stoves cause it wouldn't be large enough wouldn't okay. run the elevator. Those are the kind of things. Okay. All right. So um, the Brookfield services will come and do um, a site assessment for free. Um, 
and kind of come back with a proposal, size generator, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I told them that I, you know, I thought that was a good idea um, and that we would talk about that tonight and I would get back to them. Yep. Um, they would come up. No not to. Yeah, no, it's not going to cost anything. So can't hurt. And um, see what we're up against. Yeah, see what we're up against. Um, and then there is, um, you know, I asked, I was talking to the technician and, and, you know, he said there is, and Brandy had mentioned this, that he, she's spoken with somebody from Brookfield also there are some things that we could do here locally to just um, um, kind of oversee the, the maintenance, you know, just the, basically like you have an older car and you check the oil and you check the coolant. Mm -hmm. That's basically what we could do. So that the reason this generator shut down, um, you know, a month or so ago is that there wasn't enough coolant in it. And the technician told me that with the automatic switch, there's a block <laughs> heater that runs automatically to keep um, the uh, coolant and the engine, you know, fairly warm. Um, and that that's probably why the coolant was low is that, that the block heater runs much more than it would with a manual switch. So um, it just, the coolant just evaporates, I guess. Okay. Um, so, you know, um, in the interim, you know, we could have someone come up, we could get more keys as Brandy was mentioning. Um, <laughs> So that, you know, either somebody from the fire department or um, somebody from the town, um, you know, we could go and just check the oil, check the coolant. Um, if it's low, add some more, you know, just kind of basic old car kind of maintenance. Um, and uh, yeah, as in, on an interim, you know, we could uh, add on to our contract for this coming fiscal year to have them come twice a year. Um, you know, my, my guess is that we'll, you know, even if we do decide to get a new generator, we're probably going to want to wait a year so that we can budget, budget for, it. for it. Yeah. Um, so this could be kind of an interim plan where we do some local, um, you know, keeping an eye on it, everything um, that, that, you know, that we have the knowledge to do. Yeah, because I mean, for, for us at the firehouse, we do a monthly equipment check of everything. I don't have a problem with putting that on that check. Okay. It's not very, it's a five minute job to walk up there, open it, check the oil and the fluid as long as we can have access to it. Yeah, we'll, we'll have we key to items. start it and cycle it every, every month, but we don't, can't do that anymore with the new switch. Right. Yeah. So we could, you know, we could get maybe a couple set of keys where the fire department has yep. a set, the school can keep theirs and just in case, you know, we could invite Don Turgeon um, or Larry or both. Um, on this kind of little mini training that we would do. And yeah, then we could have another- easy, easy for us to do, it wouldn't be a big time thing. Right, we could add another set of keys to the very organized sets of keys that Brandy will have for us here in just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it would be labeled and everything. Perfect. You'll um, think so when you go in there to find something, you can actually find it. Yeah, yeah. We've all got that drawer full of keys. We don't know what they do. <laughs> So, so that, you know, that's kind of that, sounds that like a... You ask, in the process of doing this, when's mm -hmm. the last time we had our underground storage tank reviewed and tested? The propane tank? Yep. That's that one's above ground. That's above ground. Oh, it's above, it's above ground. ground. Yeah. Okay. Well, at the town garage is above ground. It's above, you know, the propane tank at the school is above ground too for the is generator. Above ground? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it okay. is. Yeah. Yes. And that's pretty much under the purview of the uh, company that owns it. That's really not the town's responsibility. So I, I'm, I'm sorry, I thought it was underground. So as long yeah, as- No, it's, it's above ground. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I should know where that is and I don't. Yeah. I don't know where okay, it is so either. It's, uh, when you just go stand at the generator, you look to the right, it's sitting sitting in the, in the lawn there. Oh, it's right in plain sight? Okay. Yeah, don't run into huh. it. No wonder yeah. I didn't see it. If it had teeth, it'd bite you. <laughs> I guess I'm going to look next time I go there. <laughs> yeah, good. Okay, yeah, and that that pretty much is that's the the um, fuel company's responsibility. Right, that's owned by the uh, propane yeah, company. Owned by them. Yeah, the catch, of course, is is that that's who you buy the propane from. Right. <clears throat> Same with the town garage. Now we have yeah. a ground storage tank that's supplied by the provider. Good. Well, so so it sounds like what we'll do is um, uh, we'll try to schedule a training, um, and we'll uh, schedule a site assessment, 
Uh, and then once we get some information back from Brookfield Services, we can discuss how to move forward on um, on whether you know getting a, a new a new generator, I guess. Um, but we have we have a, a year or more to figure this yeah, out. I think if we decide that's the route to go, we'll just budget for it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. Anything else, Brandy? Any thoughts that you have about the generator? I know you were pretty involved at the, in the beginning there when uh, the power went out. Does that sound like a good plan? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. okay. All right. So, Michael, okay. you're going to be the one setting up this site assessment and testing. Thing? Yes, I will call them and um, and we'll set that up. I'll let everybody know when 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 this happens. Maybe they can both happen at the same time. I don't know. Um, so next on the agenda is uh, appointed and elected officials, and we've sort of already done that. Um, yeah. I know one thing that we, we at our last meeting we had discussed, we still haven't appointed a road foreman yet. Um, and we've, we talked about it a little bit at the last meeting, but wanted to make, you know, not make a decision until we could discuss it again with you being here, Paul. Okay. Um, so, and I, I do realize that I didn't warn that. Um, but we didn't warn John either, so. Um, so we could discuss this. Um, you know, my feeling is is that, you know, Greg Parkhurst has been the road foreman and is definitely kind of serving that position at the moment. Um, and I would have no problem with reappointing him um, for, for this year. Um, I don't know how things will change when we go through the hiring process for a third full-time person. Um, but that's kind of those are just my thoughts, and, and I'm you know would like to hear from other select board members and, for, and from Chuck about that. Yeah, I'm interested in Chuck. I mean, because again, we've had had some issues with the leadership down there. Mm -hmm. um, Chuck's going to have a better feel of it than than I would. I, I just we have an opportunity to change that if that's an issue. If Chuck feels that Greg's the best choice for the following year, then then we should go with that. Really, he's the only choice you got in it. Right now, correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want Greg Adams to be the foreman, and and no. Peter's, you know, Peter and Tim are part time, so. Yeah. But again, it, it may be an issue we want to visit at some point. Um, just because someone's not a good leader doesn't mean they're not a good highway maintenance worker. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. One of the failures we have a lot of times is you know, someone's good in their position and we move them up out, outside of their comfort zone and their skill level. And that's mm -hmm. not necessarily their fault. And sometimes you think that it's a punishment to, to, right. uh, to right. it's not really, it's just, sometimes you got to recognize that it's not my thing. I'm going to be in right. charge. And I'm not saying that here. It's just, um, I just want to, that's kind of how I view things is I've, yeah. I've worked for many people that were in my job, fire inspectors. And as soon as you put them into that leadership position, it wasn't such a good thing, but Mm -hmm. um, you know, if only a couple in my time have ever recognized that and said, so maybe I should step back. I'm, I'm not helping the organization. So that's my thought process. But again, I, okay. I agree with Chuck. I don't think we have an alternative right now. No. And they no. Kind of see what plays out. We won't and have we, any problems through the summer anyway. Okay. Okay. I mean, Greg and I finally got onto the same page last summer. And, okay. and we pretty much got a plan for, so we both know what the hell's going to happen. And as long as you're comfortable, because again, Greg and I have had our issues, but I'm trying to look at it objectively as a, as a, there, there are some things that show a leadership problem and, and we, we have to address those at some point. I get in it probably right now is not the time to do that. Well, I know one thing that we could do and um, is, you know, just present to Greg as the road foreman some of the concerns that we do have with his leadership role as the road foreman, you know, kind sure. of do it yep. in a thought, thoughtful, non-threatening way. Yeah, because I don't um, want to mean, because again, some people learn when you pulled something out and say, this is what a, we see as a problem, maybe they don't see it. Right, yeah. So it wouldn't hurt to communicate some of those thoughts with Greg um, in some kind of maybe written form and then we kind of like a job or a, review or whatever you call it where you know it's a yearly performance review or something and there's suggested changes or whatever what's that chuck 
He must be about due for one anyway, isn't he? Yeah. Well, I just yeah, want to we, make sure he's not feeling threatened because I certainly don't want to. Right. Right. And right. that does sometimes, Greg, you know, when you try to offer right, criticism, gets however tactful and thoughtful, that is often the way he would react. And um, yeah. So yeah. Um, no. yeah um, I, I guess I'll echo that in a way. I'm just not looking to alienate Greg. Right. Anyway. Yeah. But we do have to recognize there are some issues that we do. There's some shortcomings. Okay. Yeah. But you know, on the other I think hand, that there's a smart way to, to recognize maybe, you know, with that review process, which mm -hmm. is already established, yep. um, that that there are some things that maybe could change. Okay. But that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, we're going to take a position away, especially right. in the short term. Mm -hmm. We. Um, uh... Sorry, Chuck, go ahead. No, Sorry. I, I was just going to say that um, last summer we had a difference of opinion on the way things ought to be cleaned up when he was done working on a road. And it took a while, but he finally come around to clean it up, making it look decent instead of leaving a mm -hmm. mess around. And mm -hmm. So, but um, Mike is definitely right. You got to be kind of careful how you go about presenting it to him mm -hmm. the first time. After he has a chance to think about it a little bit, then you can go along and talk about it. It ain't too mm -hmm. bad. Yeah. The first time you present it to him, he's pretty apt to get a blow little... up. Yeah. And you know, so one thing we could do is is also have a list of things that we, you know, of his strengths that you mm -hmm. know that we could recognize. Sometimes oh, yeah. some sugar on the mustard helps a little right. bit. Well, I think the very first step is we've got the job requirement written right. out and just when when we go through this approval which i'm happy to do tonight if we want to do that um mm -hmm. just here it is and these are the expectations yeah. yeah why don't um why don't we just try to come up individually with different thoughts you know the four of us um that i guess let's see could technically could you guys could send them to me um i, I think i try to, to but i also think we should probably fill this position because we don't have a leader in the shop right now. Right. Okay. So, okay. So you're really suggesting that we point. make, make, yeah. I would, that, I, right. We really, kind of, he's there and I don't want to take that. We haven't had a conversation. Okay. Okay. So right. it's just, I think we need to, so I'll, I'll make the motion that we appoint uh, uh, Greg Parster, the Parkhurst for another one year term as the road foreman. Okay. Chris will second that. Second. Okay. Any more discussion at all? All right. All, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. And then what we can do is we can work on this process over the next little bit just to. Okay. We could aye. we could aye. have an executive session at our next meeting to discuss this and try to come up with. That would uh, work. We'll want to do that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's nothing bad. I mean, my my right. list isn't real long. It's just we have a job yeah. description. So yeah. We have some very clear parameters. Right. To work okay. from. I mean, we, we're not reinventing the wheel here. Right. No. So, no. so um, you're you're comfortable sharing that job description with him, Chuck, and making sure he's aware of what the duties are on it when you give him this news about his reappointment. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because then, one, then it's not a big deal. Then it's not a big deal moving forward, right? right. If this is like right. a, this is the expectation we're expecting, yeah. then it's no, it's we're not sneaking up on anybody. Right. Right. And I think well, that I, that's the I, right I way to approach this. Anybody. No, I don't want to either. No. 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 The one I'm afraid we're going to have trouble with this summer is Greg Grizzly. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. because I won't say any more. <laughs> well, I won't either until executive session. But okay. I, well, again, we've got to share those job descriptions, and that is the expectation. So for you, Chuck, you can just hand people those things and say, this is the expectation that you'll be measured by. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He you know, we can go into that executive session next next month or next month. Yeah. Next next time. Yeah, two weeks from now. Yeah. We could make this uh, kind of a yearly. I mean, we could call this our yearly review. Uh, we review. did that last year, and we intended to do this every year. And I think that's yeah. fair to the employees. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, let's getting getting comments. But I mean, as someone who works for a larger, you know, in a larger setting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> getting comments back from whoever your supervisors are is critical. Yes, it is. Not doing that, we're not giving the, that feedback well. Um, Agreed. We're, we're, short, we're, shorting, we're shorting them. 
right. as well as ourselves. So and, and, um, the feedback is critical. So I, I agree with Paul. We should yeah. probably try to do this on a regular basis. And yeah. yeah, we've been planning to do it annual. I think we did it last May. We June. did it last year. That was our, so it's our time first. again. So we'll have our executive session. Then after that, we'll schedule our our review. Okay. Yep. I know. I think, that, um, I think that's Muir, the HR person at VLCT, has you know always has encouraged us to do this also. Which um, and um, so I might yeah. just check in with her. Um, yeah, because if you don't, what tends to happen is you let frustrations build up on both sides, and then they unload when you got a wagon full instead of a little handful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with Paul. I mean, I, having, having a regular interaction is really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I try to tell the guys when they've done a good job, and mm -hmm. be, and that's sort of my ammunition, ammunition, so that when they haven't done a good job, I can tell them that too. Yeah. So, yeah. if they do yeah. a good job, I usually tell them they've done a good job. And I agree with Chuck. I mean, positive feedback really goes a long way towards when you have to give negative feedback. It does. Yeah. Okay, good. That sounds like a good plan. So, um, so I'll schedule an executive session, and we'll kind of start. We'll consider it starting the review process for this year. Um, so there was a motion made. Oh, we didn't vote. Yeah, we. Oh, we didn't vote. Sorry, we we're still vote. discussing. <laughs> no, we did vote. Didn't we vote? I think I don't we think did. So. Okay. No, all we right. didn't vote. So, all those in favor of appointing. <laughs> Uh, um, Greg Parker as the uh, road foreman for the coming uh, year. Um, say aye. 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 Okay. All right. So now it's official. You. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, briefly, anything else? Um, I guess we're we're done. Yeah. We'll see about this solid waste district um, appointment. I'm I'm pretty sure that'll happen too. And then I guess I'll put something out on Front Porch Forum um, for any of the positions that are still um, open. There are a few. Um, um, so the, the Woodbury School Lease, um, we, I think it, I think it was our March 22nd meeting, we reviewed the um, lease agreement that had been approved by both the, the uh, Supervisor Union Lease Committee and the Woodbury school lease committee. Um, the two committees came to approval and, and we had reviewed that in executive session. Um, and at that point in time, um, the select board was okay with the lease as it was written. Um, we didn't publicly acknowledge that because um, they would have kind of jeopardized the, uh, the union school board um, with their um, discussion of that, but they, they met on April um, 13th and the elementary school board, Union Elementary School Board did approve the lease and the memorandum of understanding with the library as, as they were written. Um, so um, we can discuss this a little bit. Um, and what we need to do tonight um, is either approve or disapprove in a public meeting the um, the school lease for uh, fiscal year 22 and the memorandum of understanding with the uh, between the uh, library um, trustees and the union school board. Um, there were some changes that were made on the memorandum of understanding for the library um, after we had met. Um, I had a, um, some conversations with Elizabeth Hansen, the library trustee chair and um, we just changed some things um, that, that clarified um, roles, um, mostly maintenance around the, um, the uh, annex room, um, what we call the community room, what is considered by the school an additional classroom um, around that and, and then who would clean the library and then just some terms on what would be called the building because um, before it had been broken down into two separate buildings, the annex school building and the library building. Um, so there were kind of minor changes in the language, um, which I can share with you now. I did send copies out, but we can- yeah, I, read, I read through it. Okay. So I just wondered if there were any questions about the school lease and the MOU um, or any comments, you know, any, 
um, before we either vote to approve or not approve it? Um, I don't have any. Okay. I don't either. And I'll okay. make a motion to approve. Okay. And I'll second that motion. All right. Um, so any discussion from anyone else here at the meeting tonight about that? All right. So um, hearing none, um, all those in favor of approving the um, fiscal year 22 uh, Woodbury School Lease and Memorandum of Understanding between the library and the school district, um, say aye. 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 Okay, all right. So we're good, we did it publicly. Um, so what'll happen next is that um, the, I'll, I'll print out a copy of the, um, the lease and the MOU. Um, I will sign it as the chair of the Woodbury Select Board and, and um, a town clerk has to witness the signing and they have to sign it also. And then I will bring it to the uh, Union School District um, and they'll do a similar um, signing and then we'll each have copies of it and we'll file it away. Um, so this, this could hold as the lease, the yearly lease. Um, it's in the lease, it's set up that it would automatically be renewed unless okay. somebody- Unless somebody decides not to. Decides not to, yeah. Right. Um, and we probably we're, will. We, had, we, we are had, operating under the assumption that it will be renewed. Yes, there's nothing, no, there's nothing, nothing that I know of now. Um, right. We did in, in the lease committee meetings, and I think I've mentioned this um, in open meeting too, that we did discuss the possibility um, of discussing as a town whether or not we would transfer the ownership of the school um, to the school district. Um, I'm going to field the school board out about that a little bit more and um, and you know it it probably will happen. It might be a good thing to have happen. Um, I I have no opinion either way. You know it's after having gone through all the angst of this lease negotiation, I would prefer just to have it stay the way it is and go from year to year. I don't see how it's gonna be really be any different. And I'm hoping maybe that the, the school district will feel the same way. Um, so I would probably meet with them at a school board meeting and to discuss this um, at some point. And, and if they would like us to pursue it, um, then we will. Um, and but it you know the decision would be a town decision at town meeting next year hopefully we'll be up in the school gym meeting as a body so that we can discuss this um, if um, and um, and I you know I would have the lease as a backup if the town decides that they don't want to sell the school to the district that the school district would be willing to accept the lease the way it is or really there's not much difference between the two. Um, so, um, so we'll see what happens, but that, that's, I just wanted to kind of be open about the possibilities and what was discussed. And um, I, guess, I guess I, uh, this is Chris, I just want to clarify that without any other changes, we maintain ownership of all aspects of the school. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and I feel like for some of our constituents, that's really important. Yeah, I agree. I just, it want, is. To make, I just want to make sure that that is is clear. Yeah, that's totally clear. Everything, yeah. and, and we've also assumed total ownership of the library building, which includes the annex. Right. Oh, so the entire campus is is, is part it's of town, our is town owned property. Yeah. Yeah. Except, yeah. yeah. except for there is one half of the wetland is owned by the school district. Right. Um, and I might see if they'd be willing to um, let that be town owned also. Um, I wanna ask them that question. So um, be okay. nice to have, if, not, if nothing else, the town parts are conserved, the, the school district part isn't. It would be nice to conserve it. Um, just as a, if they, if they wanna own it, maybe we can talk them into at least conserving it. Some continuity would be good. Right. right. All right. Not so, that anybody's going to build a 7-Eleven or a, a no. Marriott hotel on it, but. <laughs> oh yeah, it'd be an interesting. It would be an interesting hotel spot. Yes, it would. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, good. So that's the lease. Um, so um, it's getting late. With a personnel policy, um, I thought we might review it, and we still can if people are willing. I did have a, a good hour-long meeting with Jill Muir. 
Um, we re reviewed the suggestions that she had sent to us earlier um, and had discussed a few other things about the personnel policy. Um, I could review with you those or I could bring the personnel policy up uh, to screen share and we could go through it a little bit until, um, until we just can't stand it anymore. Um, basically what, what um, you know, in, in talking with Jill, um, she had some other suggestions um, and I just wanna uh, quickly review those. Um, one thing that would, I have been thinking about is um, it would be nice to separate the employee parts, especially in the paid leave time. I, I'm talking mostly about that section and, and in, the, in the benefits section. Um, to have the town treasurer, town clerk, um, have that a whole section just devoted to them and then have another, you know, the other section devoted to the employees, the kind of back and forth and the partitioning based on this many hours is kind of confusing um, in the personnel policy. Um, and then she mentioned that usually elected officials, if they are covered under a personnel policy, there's an agreement that they usually sign yearly um, about that. There's, there's an, uh, uh, in the uh, model VLCT pol personnel policy, there's an, uh, it's in one of the um, attachments or addendums. Um, she suggested that that, that would, you know, if we are gonna be offering benefits to the elected officials, and we have been, and, and she suggested that we should, um, that um, there be this also agreement that would, um, that would be a part of that process in the personnel policy. She also mentioned, um, you know, there's a whole procedure for, um, I'll call it termination of an employee that we don't have in the personnel policy that she highly recommends. Um, it, sa it saves any kind of litigation um, that might occur if um, an employee was um, let go of. Um, and there's a whole process for, in, this, in that, um, a part of the policy, which um, there's a whole process for how that would happen. Um, and, you know, so technically if the town follows the steps that are written out in the personnel policy referring to that, um, then basically there, it eliminates the possibility of, of uh, litigation following. Um, seems like a wise thing in our, our time. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so um, have we Actually, added those things in yet, or we need to do that? We have, we have not. So what I was suggesting is that I would, um, um, I can go over the notes for the, the, the things that she has suggested before pretty briefly. Um, and I could, I could um, make these changes. Um, and I would, I know that it's a timely issue. You know, so I, I would give myself a deadline of our next select board meeting, um, make these changes. Um, that I'm talking about, um, a draft anyway, that we could review at our next meeting um, and, um, and then you know, revise in any way um, to try to get a pretty much a draft that we're comfortable with. Um, and then um, Jill is willing to look at it again. Um, and then if she, um, you know, and then any suggestions that she would have, and, and there's hopefully there wouldn't be any because I'd be basically be acting on everything we talked about last week, last Friday. Um, the process would be for us to approve the draft, um, which you know we probably so we're probably two meetings out from doing that if yep. everything goes well, and then we would send it um, VLCT. Um, they do have a whole legal team for um, employment issues and they also review personnel policies. Um, we would have to pay them, but it, we wouldn't be paying them as much. It's about $90 an hour. We would get a, we would send the personnel policy, the director would review it with a lawyer and they would send us uh, an estimate, a proposal of how much they would charge. Um, so we would know beforehand what it was gonna cost us. And it's um, based on the estimates that they've given us, that's a lot less than our typical legal. Yes, yeah, it, it is. It's a lot lawyer. less. A lot less. <laughs> a lot less. So I think that's what we ought to do. Yeah, if you I agree time to get that done. That, that, that's what we did with the, with the last time we revised it. We did have, uh, and, and these lawyers have, 
the expertise in employment issues and legal, you know, legal employment stuff. Um, so they know what they're reviewing and, and, um, and, and would, you know, know what might be missing or what should be worded differently or, you know, whatever. Um, so um, does that sound like a- uh, Sounds like a plan to me. Okay, okay, that way we don't have to, we won't labor over it so much tonight. Right, because our brains are almost in. I got to bring up one more thing when we're into yeah. these other things. Uh, Chance did send us the uh, updated That's right. emergency yeah. plan. We should vote on that so we're compliant. I just was sure. basically just updating all the phone numbers and I just breezed through it. It looks like it's all in order. Yeah, yeah. I He had sent it to me to uh, add some new information. Um, I think with basically the, it was a different principal. Um, and Chris yeah, he's got a new so emergency well. management email address for yeah. himself. That had to change too. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and it, it is due May 1st. We've never, I think, we might have been on time last year. That would have been the we were, first we'll time. We'll be this year. I'll, let's approve this. <laughs> I'll make yeah. a motion. We approve this. Uh, L M P. Yeah, local emergency management plan is what that wow. stands for. <laughs> Do I hear uh, a second? I looked over. I looked over it as well, and I okay. talked to my E nine one one folks, and and mm -hmm. it looked good to me. Yeah, it looked so, good. So chance right. got it done on time. So let's get it approved on so, time. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll I'll second Paul's. Okay. Any, any last discussion about that? Okay. All those in favor of uh, approving the 2021 local emergency management plan say aye. 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 Okay. See, on my I list I, saved us. I had it on my list and I actually did it. You know, I had it in my brain, but I didn't write it down on the- I was just scrolling like, at my other computer on the side. Like, what did I, oh my God, we didn't do that yet. No, I'm glad you caught it. Um, so I just want to give you an update about the library roof. It's not <clears throat> the best of news. Um, so we had a site visit last Friday. Uh, nobody showed up. Oh my. So, um, Probably they can't afford shingles. Well, um, I think, I, I don't know if the RFP kind of scared them away. It had all, of, you know, it was like a 34 page document. Um, but um, Elizabeth Hansen has been calling around and has come up with a few um, local contractors. Um, and Diana suggested a couple local contractors that are in our Woodbury uh, town report. Um, and then I have the, I hadn't sent this RFP to the contractors who came for the school roof uh, a year or two ago, but I have their contact information. So I'm just gonna get on the horn and the computer and um, make some contacts and see if people are interested. Um, and I'm sure we'll get someone to bite. Right, I hope so. Um, I know so material prices are really wonky right now and it's it's affecting people's ability to bid. Yeah. Because yeah. lumber yeah, prices right. are crazy. Aluminum and copper yeah. prices are out, out of sight. Yeah. Yeah, I'll agree with Paul. We, we've yeah. been having trouble with this as well on different fronts uh, yeah. for drilling materials. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, it's really hard for, for us to get like, you know, even bentonite for drilling rigs, right? Yeah. Stuff like that, because the import prices are really high. We're not because they're they're afraid if they bid it right now and they actually do it in July, the price could go up. Prices cool. go up a lot. Yeah. So, you know, I I understand people being wary, but yeah. if we could even just get a reasonable, well, I think right. Diana has something. Sorry. Yeah. Di yeah, Diana. Yeah. Well, since you've gone through the process that's required by the purchasing policy, right? On that due diligence. Are you now free to just negotiate with somebody for, for yes. maybe a yes. contract? Yes, we are. Yep. Based on, yep. uh, you know, cost plus um, cost materials versus plus. Yeah, and that's basically, that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to contact right. everybody we can think of. and Because we've received and no bids, so we have to reach out and make a deal with somebody now is kind of what we got to do. Yep. And you know, if, if there are two or three people that might be available, then maybe we would ask them to give us an estimate, a bid, you know, um, if they would be willing and, and go from there. And so Brandy, are you still there? I saw you hiding in the shadows there. There you are. So um, when I'm calling, what are the things that you absolutely need a contractor to have? Obviously workman's comp, because nobody's gonna do this by themselves, I hope. Yeah. Correct. Right on the RFP, it gives a breakdown of insurance coverage, what is needed. Um, okay. So on the on the budgets that you you gave us, like for the mowing and the gravel and um, the fuel, would some of that language work 
um, as opposed to what was in the full-blown school roof um, RFP. I, what I'm after is kind of just basic, um, basic information that's necessary for the town, but but not kind of ten pages of overwhelming text. Right. Um, let me check with Vicki because I'm just worried about that the increase of the coverage isn't going to be high enough because you're on a roof. Um, huh. Okay. Yeah, if you could do that um, and maybe try to do it in the next few days. Yeah, I can, uh, she'll write back to me by tomorrow. Yeah, she's pretty prompt usually. Um, and then I'll, um, I'm, I'm working on a list of names right now. Um, and um, maybe if you get something back from her, let me know and, and I can start calling uh, towards the end of the week. Um, try to find yeah, out. Yeah, I'll CC you in the email. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, so that's how we'll proceed with the roof. Um, and hopefully we'll- Okay. We'll, um, I think we'll get somebody. I hope so, yeah. yeah. I mean, they'll probably be more comfortable if they say I can start three weeks from now right. and they can buy the material. It's the bidding process we ran. I think I would be nervous about saying I'll do it in August and I don't know what my materials are gonna cost. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree with the time frame. Mm -hmm. so yeah. You might get I mean, someone to say, yeah, if you, I can do it next month or I'll do it in August, I'll get, you know, whatever. Okay. You'll probably have to be, we'll probably have to, if it's going to be pushed out, we'll have to be flexible on the material cost. That's, I, I know that's going to be an issue. Yeah. I know one of the, one of the terms in the uh, RFP was that <clears throat> they would do the work between when school ended and right. before school began. So there's, you know, right there, you're looking at a couple of months out still. Yeah. 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 It wouldn't be until towards the end of June. Right. They would start. Yeah. And maybe the school would be okay if they were able to do it earlier. Maybe the school sure. would be okay with that. Um, I can check in with the school if, if that seems to be possible. Yeah, we call, when you talk, to them, I'm sure they'll let you know what their concerns are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, any other business at all that anybody wants to bring up or? I'm played out. Okay. I am also. Yes, Chris. Also. You're also, all right, any, yes, Robin. I had a lady call me the other day. She has a piece of property on Valley Lake Road and somebody, the piece of land right behind her just got purchased. Yeah. And he was out cutting the trees at 11 o'clock at night, right outside her child's bedroom window. Oh my. And he wanted oh to know if the town had an or, uh, noise ordinance we, and Diana Brand told me no. And we don't. We don't. Has she gone said, over what? to her neighbor? Has she gone over to her neighbor and just asked them not to use the chainsaw at 11 o'clock in the morning? That's what I told her, that she should talk to her neighbor. My yeah. question is, if she calls back, what do you want me to tell her? Who do you want me to have her call? Um, if, she, if, if the guy tells her to, you know what, um, yeah. I will go and talk to the person, um, but... You know, basically this is a neighbor to neighbor dispute or not yet, right. hopefully not a dispute. It's a neighbor to neighbor issue. And hopefully, you know, the guy's reasonable enough. If she explains to him that she has a young child who is asleep at 11 o'clock. I mean, he's chainsawing in the dark. Right, um, which is unsafe. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully that person has enough understanding to change the time that he's working his chainsaw. If not, right. then, um, then, um, there's not much the town can do legally, but um, I would be willing to go and, and talk with the person too. Okay. So would I. Yeah, okay. or me, yeah. Well, maybe yeah. it's all I think, done. I think any, any we'll of us. all go. We'll bring our shotguns. I will yeah, well, I want to go back to the dueling pistols, the one with the ball without the, <laughs> unlikely anybody, but at least it'd be over. I was yeah. going to bring like a, like. 30 paces. Or something instead, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> And we can all bring our chainsaws instead. It'll That's help you get these trees down today and be done with it. <laughs> Cut the legs off the camp. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> I mean, it might be helpful, if, you know, if she, if her husband is there too, and they can both go, right. bring the okay. child also, you know, um, and just try to, you know, try to have a neighbor to neighbor discussion. Um, well, but I also think that, you know, at, at some point it's okay for the select board to, you know, right. At least have a conversation cool. with them. But yeah. It's not cool. Certainly have a conversation. And not I would cool. welcome. I would welcome as much company as was willing to be. Yeah. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have no problem. Yeah, me either. Thank so. you. 
You're we'll welcome. tell them if, if they don't if they don't listen to the select board, we're going to get Chuck out. You have to warn it though. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Maybe maybe Ron too. There you go. There we go. Thank oh. you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Any, anything else at all? Don't put that in the in the notes now. No, I'm I'm good. Okay. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. All right. I'll second the motion. All right. Any discussion? <laughs> all right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. 802.